Dana Lewis. He joins us live from London. Hi, Dana. Uh, thanks Hi, so much Andy. for being with us. I've just got to raise that last point uh, that we heard from Melinda there. You know, it was thought for a time, at least a time, that uh, Russia might not move to back Lukashenko necessarily, that they were kind of feeling out the opposition to see which might be kind of better to support or not. But now we're hearing that Moscow has actually offered up their own special police forces uh, to support Lukashenko in Minsk. I mean, how far do you think the Kremlin would actually go to keep Lukashenko in power at this point? Well, as usual, you always ask the right question. And I don't think that there's an answer um, because, you know, Putin made that offer more than a week ago. So that's not new. Um, it's certainly they, they want stability on their border. Uh, and Belarus is part of the near afar for Putin. They, they don't want that coming in, in any way uh, under the umbrella of the European Union. And, and so Lukashenko, who has had hot and cold uh, relations with Russia for many years, uh, is now suddenly snuggling up to President Putin because it's the only one he's got left. Uh, and Putin, I think, is being careful because, on one hand, if he starts getting tougher, if they start pushing any little green men like they pushed into Crimea, into Belarus, I think that could backfire on them because the people of Belarus won't accept that kind of Russian influence inside the border right now. Uh, and at the same time, he's trying to, Putin is trying to send a very clear and direct message to the European Union, look, uh, this is not going to be another NATO country. This is not Latvia or Lithuania or Estonia. Stay out. Right. Um, so, he, you know, he's walking a tightrope. So it'll be very interesting. And that's a key question, as I said. But as you say, I mean, they won't accept Russian influence. We're also hearing they don't want any foreign influence involved. And we've just seen, you know, the opposition leader invited to speak before the UN Security Council. Now we have the Baltic states deciding to impose sanctions. I mean, does that help or hurt the opposition? Because the advantage in, some are arguing, the advantage Lukashenko has had is this foreign interference card that sure. he's been playing. And now he'll say the Baltics, they're just a European-American arm, you know, they're, they're a front for that, uh, trying to take over Belarus. Well, I mean, I think it's always a strategy by President Putin and the Kremlin. It's also always a strategy by Lukashenko to say there are outside influences, there are outsiders that are trying to come in here. But, you know, you said they, and, and who is they? Because that, that's a, a country of 10 million people. And I think a lot of people certainly welcome the sanctions today from the three Baltic countries against 30 of the so-called uh, power vertical, which is Lukashenko himself and all those around him, sanctions against them. Uh, the next step is, will the EU and Bill Browder, who is the, uh, who is the, the, the author of the Magnitsky sanctions from the United States and Canada and, and also Britain, is pushing Europe to very quickly take similar sanctions against Belarus and officials there. And that means just not banning travel, but that means going after their bank accounts mm -hmm. and going after their money abroad. And that is key. So that's something that Browder is pushing for. So I think people inside Belarus, I'm guessing, I talked to a journalist at length last night inside Belarus, and she said people welcome that outside pressure, but at the same time, you're right, absolutely. They don't want this to be seen as anything but a domestic grassroots revolution against what was clearly an election fraud. Okay. You know, there's also this discussion now about uh, a referendum Lukashenko wants to hold on, on constitutional yeah. reform. Good, good luck. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's done that good. before. He's done it a few times before, and it yeah. actually only served to strengthen his position uh, as president, kind of knock out any kind of term limits. So, I mean... Sure. What, and what? Part of, exactly. Part of it was getting rid of that two-year term limit. Yeah. So, and he has said, we're not going to go back to that. Like, no, let's not revisit term limits, because he just wants to retain power no matter what. And when you read specifically what is he proposed in constitutional amendments, it's just nothing that's going to put the fire out in the street. I mean, is that the best he can do to, to try and look conciliatory and that he is trying to engage? Well, the best he can do is to try and shut down communications in the country. And he's failed. The best he could do was try to jail and torture his opposition, which he's done, which has only ignited the street even more. The best he could do was go after the main candidate, uh, Svetlana Tikhonovskaya, who is in Lithuania now, who will address the Security Council unless Russia vetoes it on Friday. That will be interesting. And then she'll also talk to the EU parliament next week. Lukashenko's done his best, but I mean, I, he's a dinosaur and he is unable to control and, and put out 
the flames there. And I think this is going to continue week after week after week. And, you know, I, my, my money's on the street. I, I don't think he can survive this over a long period of time. And by the way, this, this point was made to me again and again last night from inside Belarus. This is not just about the election. This is about an economy uh, on, on its face. And people are furious about how he handled COVID-19, how he's handled the economy. There's a lot of desperation there. That's not going to go away. Dana Lewis, great as always to have you. Thanks so much for being with us. We appreciate it. Thanks, Andrew.